Welcome to my channel. I'm out on site. I'm at the hybrid roof where you may have seen us do videos on how we built this roof and also the warm roof insulation. Now the way we design the roofs is to make the build easier. So what we do is we make sure that we can insulate above or between or a combination of the both and then we put our ceiling collars through so they're not in the way. If you don't do that, invariably you've got to try and cut insulation around them and that's particularly tricky. So what we do is we have a lattice ridge which does all the work. We then insulate everything from ridge all the way down to eave to make it super insulated using the gaffer tape. And then we come along afterwards and we put through our collars which form the ceiling joists which are fairly straightforward. They're spiked to the sides of the rafters and then we put a timber lock through as well. And then we hang them with a small lightweight jiffy hanger off the lattice trusses which forms a complete ceiling. So the start point is obviously measure it all out, set it all out, cut all the joists, which takes no time at all. That's what I need to go and do next. I'm gonna cut the collars. What the collars are is just the piece which will connect all of the plasterboard together to form the flat ceiling. And it also adds strength to the roof. It actually adds the triangulation at the top to reduce the overall rafter length to hold the weight of the roof and the tiles. So I'm gonna be using the Hilti SC30 WR. This is the 22 volt neuron. I've got an eight amp hour battery. I wanna see just how far I get. I think I'll easily do them all with that. I'll get all the timber up onto the stalls and then I'll start cutting them out. I'll make a couple of templates of the two sizes and then literally just bash them out. Should only take me about half an hour or so. Then it's a matter of going to nail them all in Callum is up there at the moment, marking everything out where they all need to go. That takes just as long as it does to cut them all. So I've just cut every single piece, around about 45 pieces. We're gonna go up and nail them in. But I did say about the battery and how we're gonna get on. So I'm just gonna check. You saw me in that sort of time lapse, just whizzing through everything with obviously the same battery. Now, if I just check, we've used a quarter of the battery there. There's uh, four indicator lights and one is now gone off, which means we've obviously used a quarter of it. It's incredible, isn't it, to think all of that cutting. This is quite large format timbers. And if you're wondering why I don't use a chop saw for something like this, it's just because it takes too long. And instead of me having to lift the material on the chop saw and keep moving it backwards and forwards and wanting it to rock off, it's just so much easier with a circular saw when you're doing lots of repeat cuts, breaking out something like this. So that's effectively what what I do and why I do it. So now we'll get upstairs and we'll fix them in. So after cutting all of the joists, it was just a matter of spiking them all in or nailing them all in. And it was really straightforward. What we do is we put several through, which are spaced around about 2.4 meters apart, i.e. the length of my longest level. And then we just simply clamp the level on towards the back and we fix them all through so they're dead flat. It just eliminates the need for trying to mark every one and hold every one. The level does the work, it speeds things up. And also you could use a laser, but when you put a laser up at the right level, you get shadows, it will hit something. And if you laser below and measure up, there's margin for error. So this is just a really nice way of getting it all super flat. Where we have a roof window, we just have some relief there. So that there's just a lightweight piece of trimming there which then takes timber work back or lining or plasterboard back into the window. And there we didn't need to have a structural collar because below there 
is a purling which splits or reduces the clear rafter span. So this is effectively what these collars do. It forms triangulation at the top, it strengthens the roof and it reduces the clear rafter span. And what the clear rafter span is, when you work a roof out, you allow for the tiles, the lengths of the timbers, that dictates the depth of the timber, the strength of the timber, and then by adding purlins and collars and other points of support, you can keep the rafters to a minimum. So that's basically what it is. So that's pretty much it. That's how simple it is to pull all the collars through. It was just a matter, as I say, cutting them all to size, bringing them up and getting them all fixed home.